I need to set things up. I've been busy talking to people. Oh shit, sorry about that. Um, let's see, how do we... <laughs> <coughs> Oh dear. Hmm. I need to look at chat. Okay, chat name. Chat is not going crazy yet. So I got time to prepare. Oh my god, you're here already! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that scared me. <laughs> oh, I thought I was alone. Okay, never mind. Hold on. Thank you. Thank you for letting me take my time. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. Please connect. Um. Whoa. on my ears ah oh, oh 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 i almost dropped my phone oh oh no oh, my God. oh. oh my god i can still hear it I think everyone can hear the fireworks later. All right. Oh my god, what is with the lag? The lag is bad. Oh dear me. But I... Hmm. Oh no, did I just kill... <laughs> oh. Oh. oh man. Oh, the scuff is too real. But at least it's like behind the scenes, right? So you don't know what's happening. But I fucked up. <laughs> oh no. Okay, here we go again. Gotta set things up again. Ah. Yo, I swear these fireworks are gonna like dox the hell out of me. Alright, um. Jesus Christ. Okay. Okay. Please work. I can hear it, but I can't see it. <laughs> I think it's... I think I can... I can start, I guess? Yes? Okay, uh... We'll find out if it shows up on screen because OBS not showing me instead. <laughs> oh my lord, okay. Okay, let's start. I hope, I hope we can see every No, we cannot see anything! Help! Oh god, please! <laughs> Oh my god, please. Oh my god, please. Please let me stream. Why are you not? <laughs> Hello? How do I refresh? Oh, there they are. Okay. That's sorry. Sorry, 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 sorry. Jeez, gosh. Okay, sorry. Ah. Uh, okay, here we go. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I'm a Yuno, and we are playing New Carnival Fanciful Carp 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 uh Part Two. Yeah, which is still just a prologue. 
we yes apparently we have another six more chapters before we have to wait next week for another installation of their uh event stories yes 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 hello everyone i hope you're doing good you guys doing good yes 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 so it was it was painful to collect materials i i mean <laughs> I literally just got everything done by like, uh... No, I thought we could advance in the checkpoint because... Kuya? Kuya was, um, announced. And I thought it was related to this event. I don't know, is it- are they related? Grandpa Fox, that's- oh, he's coming soon though. He's coming soon though. I believe that we're gonna actually get- We're gonna get- this region actually. You saw Ray? Yeah, Ray 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 has been announced. But the silhouette, the fox ears in the second one, I think that's Kuya. Yes. Oh my god, Tang Hulu. <laughs> so many chapters that blind my eyes to the social media. I'm sorry, I was very slow. But let's enjoy it together, eh? Alright, I think we left off at like, uh, chapter 10. So we can go on at chapter 11. Hey Ray, hello, how you doing? How you doing? I hope you're doing good. I don't know what's happening in the more recent chapters, actually. I just know that uh, Kuya appeared and burnt Aiden. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Relying on your memories, Aiden and Olivin make their way to the town as seen from the tower. However, after leaving the forest and passing through the white mist, what greets their eyes is... Oh my god, the Sahara does- <gasps> We're gonna see Dante? Wait. This is... <laughs> There's no way she's selling mashes in the desert, right? <gasps> the little girl selling the mashes is, is Dante- Oh my god. <laughs> okay. <gasps> oh! 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 Yo! Oh hey, <laughs> foolish travelers. Wouldn't you solve my riddle? Your very lives depend on it. <laughs> Never mind. I guess anything is possible. <laughs> Kuya, what are you doing here? Hello, YY! Welcome, welcome! I hope you're doing good! K Kuya finally appeared! <laughs> huh? Hi, Jen. Hello. I miss you. I haven't seen you on my stream for a while. How are you? Oh. Oh. Oh, he caught him. <laughs> to Aiden's surprise, he sees the tapered yokai trembling with tears in his eyes, caught in Kuya's clutches. Ah, baby. He says a little baby. Now roast him, okay? <laughs> you little shit. <laughs> All you have to do is to win this magnificent prize is to solve a single riddle. Are you up to the challenge? What story is it this time? A desert? A, a riddle? A yokai? What creature? <laughs> No, I can't. Isn't this? <laughs> Wait, I I know this. This is a okay. The logical answer is an umbrella, right? What creature walks on four legs in the morning, uh, on two legs in the afternoon, and also on two legs in the evening and night? Also on two legs in the evening and night. Okay, wait. That's not the same um, riddle that we get. Uh, so it's not. The 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 the, the, the uh, philosophical answer of like okay the four legs being the baby then two legs in the afternoon is an adult and it's supposed to be three legs in the evening that's that's how it goes right hmm. 
I know. The answer is a human. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Wrong. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, so that's where it came from. This is where the screenshot came from. Yeah, it's the scene. <laughs> Is it an animal that has successfully transformed into human form? When still in animal form, they walk on four legs, and after uh, after taking on a human form, they walk on two. <laughs> <laughs> that is indeed correct. Here, take your prize. <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> you little shit. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh. Oh, poor baby. That's what you get. Whee! This is your culprit, young master. Do be sure to interrogate it. And whatever you do, don't let it slip away again. Wait, is he the troll under the bridge? Wait, what story is Kuya though? Who riddles them that? Wait. <laughs> but there's no bridge. Hmm. Kuya tosses the tapir yokai a... Uh, Aiden's way, and then slowly fades into the scenery. Jesus Christ, that's just horrifying. <laughs> A rueful smile on his face, as if wishing he could stay longer to enjoy the show just a little bit longer. <sighs> Mr. Raiden, Father Olivin, that tapper yokai. Oh, <laughs> Yakuma has been running this entire time. Holy shit! Holy shit! <laughs> huh? Eh? Mr. Kuya is here as well. Huh? And now he's gone? <laughs> uh, Yakumo, thanks for your help. I see. So, Garu, Mr. Ray, and Mr. Father left after completing their storylines. I chased the tapir yokai all over the place and saw parts of different stories all mixed together, but aside from Mr. Kuya, I haven't seen anyone we, uh, anyone else that we know. In that case, you're likely the only one still trapped here. Now I think there's plenty of other characters if everyone's joined <laughs> in, you know. But now that we have the perpetrator, it's time to get to the bottom of this mess. This little one. Did you say it was a tapir yokai? Despite my extensive reading, I've never heard of such a creature. Also, what's wrong? It looks a lot like Leo's stuffed animal. Oh, that's so cute. That, that means that means that doll was like so so fucking loved till it gained a soul. That's adorable. Really? I can't remember what it looked like. Hey you, what's your relation to Leo? Why do you look like his stuffed animal? <coughs> Seems like it doesn't understand. Aw, oh, it, it, it's starting to cry. I don't understand what it's saying either. It has a very unusual accent. And look how much it, it's shivering and shaking its head. Aw, poor baby. Now I feel bad for like tossing it like a football. Um, why do I suddenly look like the bad guy? We're no victims here. <clears throat> Don't be afraid. Uh, we're not gonna hurt you. We just want to know what's going on. Does he, does he understand? <laughs> do you understand this? If you do. Gee! It seems to understand. I'm gonna ask you some questions. Nod your head for yes, shake your head for no. Is that okay? Oh. It nodded. Aww, smart little boy! This is a cute little gay! Aww. Great. Now we can finally communicate. Yes. Alright. 
time to use the skills I picked up part-timing at a detective agency to figure this mess out. Bitch, you're 25! Aren't you like, wait, no, aren't you 23? Holy shit! How do you... How did you part-time in a detective agency? Oh my god! Oh, you are a shachiku for life. Oh, that's it for chapter 11. Janitor? No, he's the... Uh, he's a part-timer at the detective agency. <laughs> at one point. <laughs> Aiden got so many part-time jobs. Yeah, yeah. He's only 23 if he's 28 or 25. Okay, I can still understand. He's like... He's 23. Jesus, your life barely started. Holy crap. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Chapter 12. Let's go. Let's see what's going to happen. Okay, so we have seen the forest duo Quincy, Kuya. Uh, who else? Yakumo Oliver's with us. We haven't seen Edmund yet. We've seen Garu though. So. Oh. Still quite a lot of people to go through. The three men spent a long time trying to communicate with the tapir yokai through words and gestures. Bit by bit, they confirmed their initial speculations and get a general idea of the situation. The more the event goes on, I believe Aiden will soon say he knows how to make a play. Oh my god, he's Dr. Stone! That's what it is, he's Dr. Stone! <laughs> Bruh, they, they made... They made phones in Dr. Stone! They made a rocket to go to the moon! <laughs> Bruh! You're, you're in prehistoric times! What are you saying? How can you make a rocket? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's gonna, he's gonna be like Senku. Oh no, my nose is getting clogged. Ah! Okay, I think that's enough questions. Let's go over what we know. The Tapir Yokai created this illusion. A magical space that sucks in anyone nearby with high enough essence levels, but it never intended for us to get trapped here. As Mr. Ray suspected, oh, Ray was here too, right. Okay, I see. This place, this space was created out of a dream. Only if only it wasn't one person's dream, but a combination of all the dreams and the of the children at the orphanage. And because it's a combination of the children's dreams, it's full of elements from the stories we told yesterday. That's also why the stories seem to be overlapping and interconnected somehow. And the reason this little critter keeps showing up it's because it's been trying to guide me through the stories to find others who have been accidentally trapped here so that I can help them leave. Have we got that right? Oh, so everyone's trapped! Okay. Okay, that means we gotta go through everybody. Oh, I'm excited. I wanna see Aiden. Uh, Edmund. Let's see. Cocky Lil. Did you just puff out your chest and nod like a boss? <laughs> mm. After you had us running all over the place. Oh, a little bit. Oh, 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 Etsy hentai fucking hen. <laughs> Tap this bitch. He's going to his. <laughs> he went straight for the boobs. Oh my god. No, <laughs> disgusting. Get out of my sight. I don't like you anymore. <laughs> It escaped into Olivan's loving arms. That's alright, little one. Don't cry. But if this illusion is made up of children's dreams, won't it disappear once the children wake up? <laughs> Poking its head from Olivan's warm embrace, the tapir yokai vigorously shakes its little round head. My chat is Kimoi. Y'all. <laughs> Do you like the mommy milkers? Oh god, I did sniff like... I, I did take a sniff at um, 
Olivine's perfume at the shop that sold their perfume. Holy fuck. He smelled like diabetes. <laughs> it, it was milky, it was creamy, it was uh, very, very sweet. I'm like. <laughs> World, world cold, cold and hard. Olive oil, warm and soft. Good point, I guess. <laughs> it won't. So we still have to finish acting out the stories. Do tapirs have sounds? I've seen it in the local zoo, but like, it. Just looks ugly and sleeps all day. Doesn't really do much. That isn't right either. But um, why are you shaking your head so slowly like that? I don't understand. Or could it be the key to leaving? I guess. Hello. How you doing? How you doing? Hope you're doing good. Ah, oh, it's smiling! What a little baby! Whoa! Is, is that it? I saw it in, in a zoo too, and it is sleep. Yeah, yeah, yeah! It's, it's, just, it's just so chill. It's a chill little guy. Actually, actually it's a really big guy. It's, it's like a deer or something. <laughs> doing good, how about? Yeah, I'm doing good. I'm a little sleepy. A lot busy. I'll be going to Taiwan next week. So goodbye, y'all. <laughs> oh shit, wait, I have to delay my stream again. Now I just realized. Because I'm flying off on very like on the days that I will usually stream. Oh shit. Well, goodbye, y'all. Y'all suffer. <laughs> I'll be back on Tuesday, I guess. Yeah. Oh, take your time. Go ahead and change it. Yes, yes. Mm. The heartfelt wishes of the characters. In Olivan's role as the princess in the tower, he's particularly concerned about some poor about a poor girl selling matches. Correct. I want to help her. What about you, Yakumo? Does the white snake have any unfulfilled wishes? Me? I don't have any in particular. But the twist in the white snake story occurs when he becomes intoxicated and accidentally reveals his true form to his partner. That scene has always been stuck in my mind. If possible, I'd like to e explore it further. Please! Please! Let's have furry sex! <laughs> Please! This, I never got either of your cards. Please! Can we have two or chin chin yakumo? Please! Oh my god. <laughs> I've often thought about how the white snake might have imagined his, his partner's reaction if his true identity was ever revealed. Hey, exactly! See? See? Okay! Yako! Aiden is horny enough to accept you in every form possible! I believe in Aiden! He fucked himself, quite literally! Hello, Hunter! Welcome! Welcome, welcome! I I love how you came at the right time! <laughs> at, at the moment I said, FURRY <laughs> Oh, I'm embarrassed saying that now. Goodbye. Uh, <laughs> oh my god. <sighs> so it's not just the White Snake's heartfelt wish, but our our story-loving Yakumo's too. Uh, where can we get our hands on some cash? Maybe if we take off a few of these accessories. <laughs> yeah, right. She's saying no. <laughs> Truly the the bigger person in the room. <laughs> Do you need money, Mr. Aiden? I have some here. Huh? huh? You have cash on you? <laughs> what? Wow. Wow, this childhood story 
It's pretty, pretty elaborate. They got... The white snake got his partner's brother a house? Dang. That's... Yo, I would marry that white snake in an instant. Who cares if it's a snake? A uh -huh. A loving husband? Well, pretty? They will... F they will go through what? An underwater cave? An uh, underwater castle just to save me? Shit, that is good. What number are we on? On 12. Yes, yes. Buy a house? Nice going, Yakumo. But why do client stories always have this, these weirdly realistic parts? No, no. I'm not the one who bought it. Right. I guess not. Oh? Oh? What's happening? After going over things in his mind, Aiden reaches out and grabs his two treasured clan members. Oh. Mr. Aiden? Tapper Yokai, we want to find the girl selling the matches. She's in the town below the tower. Can you take us there? The Tapper Yokai nods and waves its front paws, a white mist slowly rising all around. Here we go! Our only goal is to complete the stories as quickly as possible. Hey shit! The, hey yo! This is the Pow Pow Girls! Look! Bubbles is in the middle, Buttercup is on the left, and Blossom is on the right. And to make sure that no humans or animals are harmed during the show. Ah, that's cute. That's it for 12? Understandable. Okay, so we have another four-ish chapters left to go. Let's go, chapter 13. Yeah, because Edmund's not here, we can't announce him as Bubbles. That's okay, we have Aiden. He's cute. This should be the correct alley. Let's take a look. Eight or? Oh, you can totally tell it's a story about a poor girl. The whole atmosphere has changed. All cold and dark. Is that a new expression? Wait, no. No, oh. it's not. Ah, you're right. It's, it is colder than before. I assumed that it was just because we left the de- uh, we just left the desert. Yeah. Hentai! <laughs> oh my! Huh? Etchy! What a little pervert! He knows where to go! He knows where to go! Oh my god. Hey, you little. Don't push your luck. See? I fucking do. <laughs> hey, do you have room for one more? Sir. Kind sir. Would you like to buy some matches? <laughs> Olivin hears a faint voice and looks down to see a thin, frail-looking girl standing nearby, holding out a box of matches. Dressed in rags, the girl can barely stretch out her arms due to the cold, her hands shaking. Oh, I know this is just a story, a fantasy. But it is heartbreaking to watch. As Aiden looks on in sadness, Olivin crouches down, his kind eyes focused on the girl. You're allowed home only after you sold all these matches, correct? Well, don't you worry. We'll take the lot. Y you mean it? Thank you, kind sir. <laughs> Of course, and we'll even take you to get some tasty food before we escort you home. Aww. Aww, that's so s Oh yeah. Yeah, because in the original story, didn't like the, the, the matchstick girl like die in the cold? That was, that was, that was dark! Oh my, is it German? <laughs> why, why do German fairy tale stories like kind of end in, end it in like a really stoic or like really dark ending? After buying enough food to last several days, the three men take the girl home. 
When they turn onto her street, they see a hunched man fidgeting anxiously in front of her house. Wait, what? Is it a kind dad? I thought I thought it was like an asshole father. Wait. Ah, father. Father, I've. Oh no, he's yeah, he's an alcoholic. Here we go. That's about right. Mm -hmm. Where'd you run off to? Don't you know you're supposed to be home before dark? But, but father, you said I could only come home after I sold all the matches. Are you stupid? What if no one buys the matches? You'll just never come home? What is he talking about? Let me guess. You sent your kid out to sell matches while you were drunk. Now once you sobered up, you started to worry, but had no idea where to look for her, right? What? Is this- uh, What? Wait, is this the actual, like, wait, no. It should be the new carnival version, right? Because in the original, he's just a drunk card and he just didn't give a fuck and- <laughs> The girl actually died in the end, that's it, it's just the end, right? <laughs> oh my god. I guess I can't call you completely heartless, but still, guys like you piss me off. Yeah, this makes it even worse because it's saying that that he actually does care, but he's just constantly making a lot of mistakes and he, he keeps being a, an alcoholic. Hello? Where's the fairy tale CPS? We gotta, we gotta call them in. <laughs> huh? Who the hell are you people? Father. These kind men bought all the matches. Huh? They bought them all? The matches my drinking buddy urged me to spend my entire life savings on, and then sell at a ridiculously, ridiculously inflated price? You sold them all? What? You idiot! You idiot! Because you fucking got into an MNL. Oh my god, you got into a pyramid scheme! And you- Because of that, your daughter died? Oh my god. <laughs> you little shit. Holy crap. That's amazing. Thank you, kind sirs. You saved my daughter. And her idiot of an old man. Well, good that you know. Good. Take better care of your daughter now. You only have one. Well then, from now on, please remember your responsibility as a father. And find an honest job so you can set a good example for your daughter. Uh, stay away from those drinking buddies of yours. Drowning your sorrows isn't the answer. All, all right. I'll work hard to try and lay off the booze. And I won't let myself get tricked anymore. <laughs> good. Good. That's how it should be. Children are precious. Changing his entire attitude in a matter of seconds. Yep, this is a made-up story, all right. Uh hum. Uh hum. Uh huh. Uh huh. But your word isn't enough. Huh? First, give your daughter a hug. She's been out in the cold all day. Good. Next, take this food inside. Oh shit! Ah, auto! Take this one inside, make her a nice warm dinner, and sit down and enjoy it together. Just the two of you. Aww. It's kind of kind of sad that you're getting like parenting uh, advice from an orphan, you know? That's kind of... <laughs> oh man, aww. Oh god, I'm glad we're in a fictional <laughs> event story this time. Holy crap. I... <laughs> Yeah, it, I I guess the orphanage caretakers are the ones like caring for Aiden and taught him the, these things, right? So they did they did right. They did they did good with Aiden somehow. Yes. <laughs> and most importantly, get all your booze and bring it out here. We're confiscating it. I I know where it is. I'll go get it. Aha, good. 
The little girl wriggles from her father's embrace and rushes into the house. She soon returns with several bottles, both opened and unopened, and hands them to Aiden and the others. Your daughter is very bright. You should thank her for giving you a chance to repent. Not every parent gets a chance like this. So true, bestie. So true. I, I know. I know. I won't make the same mistake again. Oh. 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 Good. If only real people could be like this. The man hugs his daughter. His, fail, uh, no, his face held close to hers with an expression of love and remorse, despite s still being somewhat drunk. Now you two head on inside, and don't forget the food. As for the liquor, we'll take care of that. Oh shit! Is ya- wait, we're gonna give it to Yakubo? Oh fuck! Well, goodbye. <laughs> Yakubo! It's time for some sexy time! That was chapter 13, right? So that means we're gonna be on chapter 14 now. That's really fast! We're about to end so fast. You have another three more chapters to go. Alright. Yeah, if only, but the world isn't fair, right? So <laughs> that's how it would be. So we should do try our best every day. Yes, yes. No. Oh no! <sighs> No, you know what freaking broke me in the, the matchstick girl story? Is that she hallucinated about the big warm houses and people eating warm food and the fireplace and the presents for Christmas or something. Yo, I was like, I, then she fucking died. I was like, hello. <laughs> and then what? Did, didn't she like actually wish that, uh, that... No, she dreamt that she went back home and had a warm fire and a warm dinner with her family as she died. I was like, no, <laughs> you can't. My stomach? Well, what's happening to Abel? You okay? Oh, you went out. You really can't warm yourself with matches. Are you cold, Aiden? Wait, is Olivin, are you not cold? <laughs> All of it. I should ask you. Holy crap! You are twenty. Like you are seventy percent naked. <laughs> Not really. I just wanted to see how it felt to be the to light one of these overpriced family tragedy causing matches. He's used to it. Jesus. I'm pretty sure that's a kink. Let's try another. Yeah. The sadness is causing a pain in my stomach. Oh dear. Oh dear. They're no order they're no different from ordinary matches. Well, at least the match selling girl is warm and safe at home, filling her belly with delicious food. I never thought it would feel this good, taking part in the story and changing someone's life. The version I saw is that the little girl also see her grandma when she uses the matches. <gasps> right! Yes! She's actually doing it for the grandma, wasn't it? Wait, I think so. Something like that. Oh wait, no, the grandma is already dead. That's what I remember. Yeah, 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 yeah. The grandma was dead and she lit up the matches again and she's like, Oh my god, grandma! I missed you! Oh, dad has been very mean to me, that kind of thing. That I was like, bitch, you dying! No! <laughs> oh no. I never thought it would. Oh, wait, I said that already. You're right. It really does feel good. Otherwise, things would have ended for her the way they did in the original story. Hungry, cold, and desperate. The girl sets fire to her house with her father still inside. What? 
What the f what the fuck? <laughs> no, wow. Well, yes, I agree with that. Nah. <laughs> huh? Huh? In the or wow, the client wow, no carnival's version is that she sets the fire. She sets fire to her house. Holy shit. Okay. What? What? <laughs> The blazing fire awakens her magical talents, and with her hatred for the world, she becomes an evil sorceress with a penchant for pyromania. <laughs> I totally didn't see that coming. Hmm? A minor change is all that we needed to avoid a tragedy. The first time I've heard of this story, I wanted nothing more than to change the ending somehow. <laughs> oh Wait, I think I know why He's so obsessed with the matchstick girl story In a way, it's kind of like Oliver's situation He kind of want to set fire to the church You know, he was like, you know what, fuck Fuck the client god, fuck everything I don't care anymore, oh, like being a priest, I don't fucking care Yeah, he, he Ah, oh, so that's how it... Then Aiden fucked him. And and finally, you know, after Aiden spent some time with him, all of it gets gets better, I guess. Yeah. At least she didn't die in the client version, so true. <laughs> yeah, when you think about it, yeah. Huh. Yeah, because like all of it usually gets to be the scapegoat and a lot of things too. Like example, he has to play the bad guy in the in the cult story, and then for his church, he has to you know withstand a lot of nasty things. Here's lesson: let arson be the answer. <laughs> yes. Oh dear, my nose is clogged. Ah, hold on. I'm not gonna let you hear that. I, I okay. I think it's better now. Well, it's still clogged, but it's a lot better. Ah, look. So this is what it feels like to satisfy, satisfy one's heart, but heartfelt wish. So warm, so relaxing. I almost feel a bit sleepy. <laughs> oh, the lag is real on the laptop. Oh my god. My phone isn't that bad. <laughs> 2 FPS. Aiden, Yakumo, I'll see you two shortly. Gee! What? Hello? Hello? <laughs> no all of it? So you gotta go for the daddy? They're not daddy. He, they're both wives. They're, oh, they're both male wives. You sneaky little critter. Rush and you do Yakumo's arms. Eh? Huh. Oh yeah, I th sometimes it's a bit too heavy. New carnival is surprisingly heavy. God dang. Ah, uh, so soft and warm. It feels like hugging cotton candy. Forget it. Yakumo, you said the part where the white snake reveals his true form has always stuck with you. Yes, I often imagine how he must have felt at that moment. Though he must hide the truth from those important to him, Maybe he secretly wishes that his true self can be accepted. Alright, let's get the show started. The white snake drunkenly reveals his true form. Here, these two bottles are where we just confiscated will just do nicely. Bottoms up! I have to drink them both? Chug, chug, chug. Okay, here, here I go. Oh. 
โอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหว้าว your expression changed in an instant damn little critter running away and hiding behind me now Uh, Yakumo, White Snake, how do you feel? Oh shit, can Aiden handle this all alone? Okay. I am a ser serpent yokai, all right, but I didn't choose to be. I know everyone fears me, so I all I've always held back my power. <laughs> Tell me, Mr. Raiden, what's wrong with me, being a serpent yokai? Oh, there's nothing wrong with you. You're amazing. Huh? Wow, really? I didn't expect the White Snake's true form to be so damn handsome. I've fallen head over heels for you all over again. <laughs> Please don't hide, and don't worry. You can always show me your true self. I promise I will stay by your side forever. <laughs> Mr. Raiden, wait. Oh. Oh. Wait, is this the first time that we're he we're hearing that Yakum no that Aiden says something in response like properly addressing his feelings? That's so cute, because um, because okay, spoilers for anyone who hasn't unlocked his normal SSR card. I think the final room was it? Yeah, I think it was the final room. Yakumo says, "I love you, Aiden," and Aiden says, "I know." Thank you. That's it. So he never really truly responded properly. Like he didn't say no, no, I don't like you, or did he say no, I like you too? You know that kind of thing, right? So it's like ah, you know, technically I'm oh, I'm thinking too much. He just said I've fallen head over heels for you. It's not about it's not maybe it's not love. It's just like wow, you're such a cutie baby. You're just like a cutie babu babu baby. Yeah, I think it's more in that sense, isn't it? It's like, dang, you so cute. Choo 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 choo, kiss 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 kiss. <laughs> oh! 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 My God! <laughs> Baby, <laughs> no. Oh, his face. No. No. Oh, he's so cute. <laughs> Even OBS is canceling my noise. This is not considering my voice as a boy. <laughs> oh, sweet. Sweet summer child, I about kiss you. Kiss, 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 kiss. You're exaggerating your lines. <gasps> oh, that's it. Okay. Ah, my chest feels so hot and heavy. Oh. Is Aiden gonna break his back soon? Okay, never mind. Okay, he's back to normal. Okay. Is this the orphanage? I'm back. But what about Aiden? Yokata. Yakumo, you made it back too. Wonderful. Ah, uh, the children are, are all on top of your chest. Are you all right? So 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 that's what that feeling is. I thought it was another curse. <laughs> yep, 
Good morning, Yakumo. Did you sleep well? Hi. Oh, break what? Yeah, uh, because apparently in the White Snake story, it ends with the lover, aka Aiden's role, being like he breaks his back or something. I don't know. He dies. He basically dies. Then the White Snake gets punished, or something. Yeah. Yeah, basically it's a very sad, uh, sad ending, you know, like, neither, no one gets together, they die. Wait, no, wait, no. The White Snake, then, got jailed, I think. And then, he found out his lover has to, uh, has died because he was in jail for so long. Right. <laughs> I thought you meant, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> you pervert! <laughs> I see what you're saying now. Mm -hmm. Nasty. Good morning, Father Olivin. I slept very well. I had the most amazing dream. Watching the sunrise, the children still sleeping soundly. It really is just like a dream. Hello? Are we not forgetting someone here? <laughs> That's right. Huh? Oh, what about Mr. Raiden? He didn't come back with you? Oh, is he back? <laughs> ah, don't cut my head off! Huh? Another bottomless pit? Ah! Yakumo! Above! Watch out! Oh shit! Wow! Okay. <laughs> Aiden's back! Yeah! Huh? It didn't hurt. I fell on a bed! Haha! <laughs> Aiden-san! <laughs> All of it! Yakumo! Morning! Guess who's back? What? That's it? That's chapter 14, we have two more! Oh, is this how they're gonna link the Hot Springs event? Okay, let's go! Very good, let's see, let's see what's gonna happen. Oh, oh, so the event has basically ended. Aiden, where did you fall from? And what was that about your head getting cut off? After you two left, a bunch of toy soldiers came out of nowhere. I was completely surrounded. They wanted to capture me and cut off my head. So I made a break for it and fell down a hole. And that's how I ended up back here. You were surrounded by toy soldiers who wanted to cut off your head? Edmund? Edmund? Wait. Hello? Huh. The Edmund is the queen of hearts? Hello? I believe! I believe! Oh god, please. Do you have any idea what story they came from? Huh, that's... That's the dream of the long-legged le hair. Leo, you're awake. Good morning. Morning, Father Olivin. I had a weird dream last night. Me too. I dreamt the princess in the tower was using her hair to tie up bad guys. I dreamt the white snake went on an adventure in the desert. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> They're not too far from the truth. Seems like you're all awake. Run along and get washed up, everyone. Then we'll have some breakfast. It's no surprise that they had such crazy dreams after all the stories we told them last night. <laughs> but still nowhere as crazy as what we went through. I'm totally beat. Huh, I guess the Tapir Yokai disappeared. Speaking of which, Leo, do you mind if I take a look at your stuffed animal? Ah, sweet baby. Rubbing the sleep from his eyes, Leo climbs out of bed makes his way to all of it and hands over his treasured stuffed toy. Ah, uh. oh, the resemblance is uncanny. Leo, where did you get this stuffed animal? 
My mom made it. I always used to dream of a little animal when I was little. I drew it from memory one time, and my mom used the drawing to make the stuffed toy for me. You were haunted by a Baku this entire time? Holy crap. <laughs> No wonder you always have it with you. You're like a pair of best buddies going on adventures in your dreams. Yeah. Oh. He's real. That sounded like the tapir yokai. It came from outside the window. I'm back in the real world. Why am I still chasing this little nuisance? Aiden follows the tapir yokai all the way out of town. Stopping to catch his breath, he sees an unexpected figure up ahead. What? Oh shit, it's Kuya! No matter where you are, young master, you always manage to look a complete mess. Oh, Kuya, what are you doing here? Seems like this little troublemaker has something to say to you. I have a lot to say to it too. Believe me, I can't understand a thing it says. <laughs> Wait, don't tell me. He's offering to translate? No freaking way. Did did hell freeze over? <laughs> Calm down! <laughs> now, down, down, Hunter. Into the jail you go. <laughs> nah, it's okay. Don't worry, he's just here for a little while. Is Kuya that old to like offer translation? <laughs> for baby talk? Tapir yokai are an extremely rare breed. Their essence allows them to swallow fragments of imagination and for a short time make them real. Damn. Okay, Kuya is actually explaining what's happening. Occasionally, they'll approach a human settlement to swallow dreams, but this little one is bolder than most. Not only is it constantly searching for human children, it even followed one here from the countryside. That must mean you followed Leo, Leo here, right? You must really like him, huh? Ah, little idiot. I'll take that as a yes. It's not a matter of liking anyone. It's a matter of greed. Yeah! Yeah, it's just- it's just hungry! <laughs> oh, good night, bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you for dropping by. The dreams of human children are so intensely rich that after a single taste, it became hooked and decided to follow the, ch the child to the orphanage. Yeah, yeah. Rest well. The fox yokai narrows his eyes with a smile, picking up the curled tapir yokai and j shaking it gently. <laughs> Here, take. there's an endless buffet of delicious dreams to feast yourself on, isn't that right? Choo, choo, choo. So, the dreams last night, after we told all those stories. They must have been so rich, so abundant, and so delicious. That the little glutton ate far too much, suffered from indigestion, and ended up spewing out an essence filled mess of dreams. Holy crap. <laughs> what? So the place that we got sucked into was this little guy's barf? Uh, as usual, young master, your way of with words is abs abysmal. It's true, though! It's a smoothie! It's a dream smoothie! So what kind of children dream about all of it wearing those clothes? Okay, I'll- Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe Aiden has something to do with it? You know... <laughs> maybe Aiden's the one that's tripping them, if you think about it. Illusions released by the tapir yokai disperse into uh, naturally and are completely invisible to ordinary humans. Your essence, however, resonated with the space, and after being drawn in, 
you had no choice but to abide the rules of the illusion. Again, he wears those kinds of clothes frequently. Okay, maybe it's all of it in the end. Yeah, I mean, like, he has three tissue papers for an SSR design, so... <laughs> I'm not surprised, you know? What about you, Kuya? How come you got sucked in, too? <laughs> How many times have I told you not to measure me by your lowly standards? Wait, you mean... You weren't there by accident? Think whatever you like. I'm taking this troublesome miscreant back to where it belongs. I bet... I bet Kuya just doesn't want to lose face. I think Kuya got there, got into the dream world by accident. I think he just fell asleep and he's like, Oh, well... I guess we're here now. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Little shit. <laughs> Just this once. I'll gracefully accept your gratitude. So long. Ah, bye bye. Bye bye, little guy. In the end, he never told me what the tapper yokai had to say. Shit, right? Kuya, come back here! <laughs> I know he called it a glutton, but I bet the reason it stayed in Leo's dreams is because it really, truly likes him. I'm just here to show off. He really did. He really did. was here just to show off. <laughs> He's just like, oh, oh Aiden. Oh, Aiden, sh <laughs> you know, ruffles his feathers a little bit, you know, a peacocking mode. He's like, oh, Aiden. Don't you know, I'm so, so smart, you know. <laughs> and Ada's like, yeah, uh, okay. <laughs> Alright, final chapter before we have to wait till I come back from Taiwan. Alright, let's go. Final chapter, guys. Let's push through. Let me drink some water. Oh my god, my nose! Help! <laughs> oh, started a second round of discussions already? Huh? The kids? They're drawing? Having finished breakfast, the children sit around a long table, each focused on drawing a long sheet of parchment. <sighs> The children said they wanted to draw the stories from their dreams last night. I want to draw a picture of the princess in the tower with a huge hammer. That will make it easier for her to beat the bad guys. The white snake is a big yokai, so of course he has to fly to the desert on a magic carpet. Aladdin! <laughs> They're taking it very seriously, and even using their creativity to make a little adjustment. Looks like we won't be resuming our discussions about which story to perform anytime soon. <laughs> I've given it some thought, and I don't think there's any one story that can please everyone. <laughs> but at the same time, whatever choice we make, the children will use their imaginations to expand and adapt the story in their own unique ways. So what you're saying is... It'll be fine as long as we prepare an awesome performance for them. Hi. Perhaps the children who aren't happy with the story will write even more wonderful adventure stories in the future. Ah. Ah. So Aww. sweet. So tired. I know what story everyone loves. The prince and his twelve lovers. So true. <laughs> <laughs> for for all of us outside of this game, we are like hee 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 hee. This is the greatest one. I know we spent the night inside the Ken's dreams, but I feel like I didn't get any sleep at all. No wait, I really didn't get any sleep at all. Don't worry, bed. I'm coming. He is coming. Oh. oh shit! Ow! Wow! Wow! That was that was so fast that my my PC couldn't capture that. Oh my god! Woo! 
Oh! Master, don't you know you're not supposed to run in the corridors? You nearly sent me flying! Sorry, Aster. I'm going to my room to sleep. Huh? Master, you look like... <laughs> you really need some rest. Yeah, that's what you need. Some good old-fashioned R&R. Huh? <laughs> when you have a free moment, how about inviting the clan members to join you for a nice, relaxing trip? A nice, relaxing trip? Does this have anything to do with that new plan you mentioned? Mm -hmm. Sharp as ever, Master. It's to celebrate you surviving another year in Klein and to show you appreciation for all your hard work. And more importantly, to help you maintain your youthful radiance, smooth skin, flexible joints, and healthy organs. Why did he have to say it like that? <laughs> like, it's a bit, it's a bit terrifying. He's like, oh, yes, your beautiful skin, your radiance, your organs, and your joints. <laughs> I'm like, hello? <laughs> You're sure to have more energy during the day and a whole lot more fun at night. Whoa. Whoa. You sure know how to make something sound appealing. A relaxing trip to rejuvenate the skin, improve health, and enhance pleasure. Let me guess, you're talking about... A hot spring trip? <gasps> Wait, so Klein has hot springs? Awesome! I love hot springs! More. I can't believe it. You saw right through the surprise I've been preparing for so long. Oh my god, I love onsets. I love... I, I Okay, honestly, I get, I still get a little shy stripping in front of strangers when I was in Japan for that. But it's very nice. I love it. I love it. I love bathhouses. I love onsets. Oh my god. Well, I hope I can go to Beito Hot Springs in Taiwan, though. It looks so nice! But they said the water is, like, really hot. So it's not good. It's not supposed for humans. It's it's good for eggs, though. <laughs> so. Oh, so this is how they relate to the Hot Springs event next week? Oh, I see. Get back, eh? Kimoi. Hey, well, Kimoi. But seeing you this happy, maybe it wasn't such a bad idea to let the cat out of the bag, huh? Actual hot springs. I'm psyched. Come to think of it, it's been a while since I last did anything super relaxing. <laughs> In any case, it's all taken care of. Have an amazing time, Master. And feel free to heap tons of praise on me for setting up this whole, th this whole thing up. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to it. Nobody wears clothes in the hot spring? Oh, so does Taiwan... Wait, does everyone strip in Taiwan hot springs too? Because I haven't researched. And uh, the friends I'm going with, they don't want to go hot springs day because they're a bit shy. Because we don't, we don't have bathhouses. We don't have like the culture of getting naked here. So, but I'm the only one that's like, yeah! Yeah, the last girl naked. Wow. But <laughs> I know Korea, they don't have that, right? In Korea, it's a little different. I don't know. I don't know. Huh. Uh. Taiwan wears swims swimsuits, I guess. Oh, swimsuits. Huh. Huh. Oh, I guess. Oh well, I guess I shall go to. I shall try it out in Taiwan. <laughs> oh man, global onsen, let's go. A Yubu's, a Yubu's new mission. Try out every single country's onsen. <laughs> from the naked sea, from purely naked to clothed. Let's try. 
Uh, master, don't fall asleep on the middle of the corridor. Oh, is that it? Oh shit, well, that's it. That's it. Okay, that's the end of uh, the prologue, apparently. So, judging from what we understand of the title, I guess we might have two more parts, I guess. No, I, I think only one more part to go. So it will be the remainder. I don't know. We have another We have another 30 days actually. No, we have another 26 days. So I think we have a second part to go. Yes, yes. We have Fox in a hot spring. Yeah, grandpa, grandpa. Uh Peepaw needs to be in a hot spring. He gotta soak up. Rest well. <laughs> Alright. Oh, the future cat fight of the ages. Oh shit, yeah, it's Ray and Kuya. Oh god. <laughs> oh, they're gonna be at it. They are gonna be. Oh, spicy. Let's bring. <laughs> Let's eat some t onsen tawago while we watch them go crazy. Alright, guys, then that's it for today. I'll see you guys when I'm back from Taiwan. Bye bye, guys. I'll see you guys next time. You know what we'll say? Ayumu Sumi, good night. Bye bye. Hee <laughs> hee. Good night, good night.